Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another video. Once again, and I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record, we'll be talking about art theft as it relates to some of my favorite science fiction properties. Now, I know I've been focusing on these videos a lot lately, and if they annoy you, I don't blame you whatsoever if you temporarily unsubscribe or just don't watch my videos for a little bit. I've just been on sort of a kick with them lately, and the response has been pretty crazy. Before I get into the topic of today's video though, I just want to talk about this sort of problem generally. I think everyone knew that tracing was a pretty serious issue in comic books. Often you hear about faces being traced, or when it comes to Star Wars we've seen quite frequently that the artist will basically just copy the original scenes and repurpose them. Perhaps that's a problem from an artistic standpoint, and I'm totally open to that fact, but personally it never really bugged me that much. However, what I found really surprising is just the degree to which artists use fan-created work. And whether that's tracing, like we saw with Star Wars Allegiance and like we'll discuss today, or whether it's the literal download and Photoshop of renders like we've seen with past Star Wars books. It seems like you can pick a comic at random, choose any capital ship or Starfighter, go to SketchUp or one of the similar sites, and you'll find the reference that they traced. You might think I'm exaggerating, but watch today's video before making up your mind. But one of the reasons I'm doing this is just because every video I put out, it seems like I get four, five, or more people come out and share their story. One of the commonalities that I've been noticing is that art is typically taken, at least in this context, from those who will not notice it or who aren't able to speak up and fight against it. As we saw in the prior video, sometimes Marvel just will not recognize the original artist. I also recently spoke to someone who had a similar experience with Halo's Bloodline comics, which were also produced by Marvel. I'm considering doing a whole video on this if it's something you guys want, but essentially, and this case is I think very egregious, the artist took a model made by a 15 year old kid, repurposed a few pieces, then then when confronted, basically said, well, that's what you get for uploading to this website, which may or may not be true. I don't know the specifics, I haven't looked into it yet. On that note, people are getting way too caught up on the legality of using fan art. I got about 100 lawyers last time commenting on whether it was legal or not. Of course, all with different opinions. Now, I actually am a lawyer. I understand that the law is very difficult in this area and probably favors the corporation. However, what we're talking about here is the quality of comics, the ethics of doing something like that, and whether it's right for these giant media conglomerates basically to take the hard work of somebody without giving proper credit. For me, the issue started with laziness, and if you watch my first video, that's the thing I really focus on, because I don't want to buy a comic where the artist works around what assets they have available to copy. That's just terrible. But anyway, let's move on to today's video, which will be re-examining the four-part Star Wars Wars Allegiance comic series. So in my first video I pointed out with some help from others that the climax of the comic was basically created with copied assets, including when it came to the second panel, traced miniatures where the artist didn't even remove the peg, which is pretty lazy. Knowing that they were that brazen, I decided I would take some time and go through the other starships in the series and see whether I could find some sort of fan art origin for them. And well, I was quite surprised to find that almost every capital ship could be found on SketchUp, Sketchfab, or some other website produced by a fan. So let's just start out with the cover of issue one, and I do have to give the artist some credit because I could not actually find the Millennium Falcon, that version of it, on some Sketchfab site, so it's totally possible that they illustrated it on their own. But the credit doesn't last very long because we move a couple of pages and we get the first capital ships in issue, and wouldn't you know it, there's already mistakes and already tracing. First of all, we got the first order dreadnought, and this one was really easy to find the fan work of because I just looked up First Order Dreadnought on Sketchfab and I found this exact model. You can tell because it's got some weird sort of like hairs at the nose and the rear of the ship isn't right. The Dreadnought's engine array does not look like that. The model has a mistake and that mistake has been wrought into the cannon. I can't quite get the exact angle right but you can tell that this is definitely 1000% the same ship as this model, which by the way is made by Sketchy Phase. 
over on SketchUp. And it's kind of strange because the artist actually has a better version of the Mandator available, but they went with the old one with the lore and accuracies. Oh well. We do know that they were looking at their profile, however, because they also copied their Star Destroyer model. Now, this was a pretty big mistake, because the Star Destroyer model itself doesn't have a lot of detail, it's very clean, so the artist could have got around it just by scrubbing out some of the minor details, however you can still very clearly see that the pattern on the bottom and within the hangar is the exact same, and there are these two little lines I guess, which I don't think serve any sort of purpose, but just indicate again that the design is copied. Of course the artist by the way does say that you can use these in your personal projects, just please give me credit, and some are gonna say, well, he even realized that this is Disney's IP, legally they can probably do whatever they want, and maybe, but I mean, just give the guy some credit. He's basically made this entire scene for you. As a side note, he also had a pretty cool render of a spire in his portfolio, so I think it'd be a shame if that wasn't used. I didn't spot it, but maybe you guys will. Moving on to the next page, we see the flexibility of using fully rotatable fan assets, because the same ones are used in the next scene, you can tell by the detail on the ships, and I mean, you could have basically drew triangles, so I'm not sure if it was really worth it. But again, they look really nice. Could have just added the name in the credits. But anyway, we also have on a subsequent page some First Order TIE Bombers, and these are new ships, not to the comic, I think they were first introduced in the trailer for Resistance, but they look good, and if anything, that just shows that the artist really did not need to trace ships, especially when just making triangles, because these fighters are certainly serviceable. More than serviceable, they're good. Next up, we have the Millennium Falcon. There's not actually enough detail here to tell whether this ship is copied or not, because there's not even an antenna dish, it's very sort of low res, so I'll just say it's original, I'm not going to make any baseless accusations. The Falcon itself is also an extraordinarily detailed ship, and there are so many models of it, probably more than any Star Wars ship around, so it's just beyond my capability to tell. Next up we have the cover of issue 2, and unlike issue 1 we actually do have another trace here. The TIE SF was made by another SketchUp artist, Atherin, who by the way makes a lot of really cool Star Wars and Gundam models among other things, so I'll link to his page down in the description. And the key tells here are sort of the blockiness of the wing connectors, the paneling in specifically, how the TIE SF mini panels are the exact same as the model despite the fact that the model actually deviates from the canon somewhat just for simplicity's sake. There's also some lines that are Y-shaped that's just sort of an element of his design, not of the model itself, and those make its way onto the cover. And if you still don't believe me, you can look at the style of the cannon on the bottom. That doesn't match how the tie appears in the movie. Again, nothing against the artist, that's totally fine. This is even a pretty old model, but we can see that that mistake was carried over to the cover as well. I think tracing for covers is particularly egregious, because covers are largely what sells the comic itself, so you should be putting your best art forward, and I think more time and detail should go into the cover. The art is more valuable, so in my opinion, the tracing is just even worse. After that, we have a few small personnel craft, which I wouldn't even be able to find because I wouldn't know what to search for, but don't worry. Moving on, we have the Fondor scene, and probably because of the close-up detail, there's actually a different Star Destroyer being traced. Now, I just want to say I'm only about 95% sure with this one because the images of the Star Destroyer are sort of blurry, I guess, but there are a few telltale signs which point to this being a trace of another beautiful model made by someone known as Debus 16 Anyway, there are a few tells which show that it's probably the same one. First of all, the front sort of cross is pretty distinctive. It doesn't really match the film's design, it's sort of an eccentricity of the model. Perhaps more telling though is that the comic Star Destroyer has detailing in the exact same places. We can see that on the lower level, where those guns would be, then also at the small gun banks on the main and second level structures. Now, we are only analyzing that one ship, but I'm assuming if he's going to trace one, the rest will be as well, just for consistency's sake. That takes us to issue 3, and the cover of that uses the same ties as before, and I'm fairly certain the same Star Destroyer as last time as well. One thing that's interesting is that the bottoms here have absolutely no detail. That's most likely because Debus's model was made for a mod for Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds, and you can't see the bottom of the ship there, so he didn't waste any time modeling it. There's nothing else really ship related in that issue, which takes us to the final part, issue number 4. The cover of this one has, and at least I'm 90% sure of this one, probably the weirdest trace of them all. I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but it traces a fairly simple T-70 X-Wing made by Johnny L. The clear indication on these models is the angles. 
particularly in the nose. The geometry matches the model in the exact perfect way, despite the model's nose not matching what a T70 actually looks like. It's not by any means a low poly model, it's a nice one, but it's got some very distinct geometry which carries over to the tracing almost perfectly. Other obvious touches, including the simplistic sort of mechanisms under the wing there. If you looked at, say, the film, you'd see the engine coming in at the bottom there. The model portrays it in one way, which is sort of unique to the model, and you see the exact same thing on the cover. There's also a couple of markings on the model which are carried over to the fighter on the cover, even though they're not inherent to the X-Wing, they're just choices made by the modeler, if that makes sense. Later on in the issue, we get more resurgence. I'm not going to spend my time analyzing them. Then, of course, at the very end, we get the two panels which I discussed prior. First of all, the fleet copied from the Rise of the Resistance trailer, which, again, I've got no real problem with. I mean, it is a Disney Star Wars asset. You might as well use it. But then later on, we get the scene copied from Mel's miniatures, and you can tell by the bottom of the Star Destroyers there that they're of the sketchy phase variety. And that brings us to the very end. Besides for old man General Hux, there's not really a lot to talk about. However, we can state that every single capital ship in these four issues was traced from a fan render or a fan design, as were the X-Wings, the TIE Fighters, and perhaps the other ships, although I don't know enough to say whether they were or were not. So the question I ask is, is it worth it? These comics to me, at least the space scenes which are my favorite, basically seem to be artists moving around existing models and trying, or sometimes not even trying, to hide that they were copied. Definitely saps my enjoyment from it all, which is part of the reason why I decided, even before realizing how deep this went, to not buy Marvel Star Wars comics anymore. But as always, I want to hear your guys' opinion, am I overstating things? Do you think it's offensive for big companies like Marvel, or perhaps more pointedly like Star Wars, to take art based on assets that they've owned or creative? I can see why there's some discussion on this, although I certainly have come down a specific way. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. If you guys want to hear about the Halo and Marvel theft, a whole different topic, let me know. I definitely will be returning to lore videos soon. I've just been really enjoying sort of talking about this major issue in the fandom. But until next time, guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.